Hi there, hope you're well. Uh, we're back at the workshop drawer cabinet this week, and in this one, I'm fitting the final pair of drawers using soft close undermount or concealed drawer runners. But we're going a little bit off piste when it comes to the measurements. Now, as always, you're joining me part way into the project, and because it's been a little while since I used this style of drawer side, I've actually made a full sized mock up of the drawer box so I could test everything out and make sure I didn't make an expensive mistake with the veneered plywood. Now, whenever you buy these concealed runners, you get a set of drawings with them that specifies the sizes and the clearances and what they need to be. And when I was making stuff for clients, I always followed those instructions to the letter. But now I'm doing stuff for myself. I had me wondering why these clearances, these tolerances were so great. For example, I made the test draw box to the specified size. And while it works fine, it's really quite gappy between the box and the runner. That's using the recommended internal cabinet width minus 42 millimeter measurements that's standard for these runners. I'm also using regular 18 mil or three quarter inch plywood for the sides of the draw box. And most runners specify a maximum of 16 millimeters. And I know a lot of guys cut a three millimeter rebate into the inside face of the side just to comply with the width spec. But given how much space there seems to be between the draw sides and the runner, I decided to live dangerously and trim the draw width down by five millimeters and leave the sides at 18 mil to see what happens. The draw box construction is pretty simple. The back sits between the sides and the base slides into a groove that runs all around with the front or fascia completing the box. The back is notched to allow for the runners and there's a couple of simple hooks on the back of the slides that locate into holes drilled into the draw back. A pair of clips screwed to the underside of the base secures the draw box to the runners and these clips have controls for making in out up, down and side to side adjustments should you need them. That's one reason for the generous tolerances, of course. I did enough of these drawers back in the day to still have a template or two. And of course I have my mock-up drawer to use as well. I have the drawer fascias already cut from the maple veneered plywood from way back. And I've cut the sides and the back from birch faced poplar plywood. The draw bases are 6mm birch as the alternatives don't go that thin and I've eased the edges of the base with a sanding pad and added a slight curve to the front corners. More on that later. I'm using 500mm runners so the draw sides are cut 10mm shorter at 490mm and with all the pieces cut I'm using a quarter inch grooving bit in the AUK router bench to make the groove for the base using a sacrificial fence to keep the veneer splinter free. The groove in the back I'm making a little deeper than the 6mm groove in the sides, 9 or 10mm, 3 eighths of an inch or thereabouts. On the stopped groove in the fascia, you can see I've added stops to the fence for the in and out points. The stopped groove is a little shallower than the sides at just 4mm or so. Again, the logic for this will become clear a little bit later on. I'm using the original 10 minute workshop loose tenon jig to join the sides to the back with 5x30 moldonos at narrow mortises in the ends of the back and mid-size in the faces of the sides. Incidentally, the original loose tenon jig is on a spring special right now at just £35 plus VAT while stocks last. The stalk is available directly beneath this video or at 10minute.shop if you prefer to browse. The drawer fronts I'm attaching with peanut 2 fixings. I've talked about the peanut 2 many times before. There's a playlist dedicated to the fixings, the jigs and peanut project. So I won't go into a lot of detail here, but it's the perfect connector for this kind of joint as it resists the axial load on the fixing, the push-pull forces that can weaken a joint over time. The peanuts simply drill into the edges of the sides and the corresponding keyhole slots are routed into the inside face of the drawer front. I can use the mini jig and fence for the drilling, but the offset fascias mean that I have to line everything up against pencil marks for the router work. It's easily done and the cuts are fast to make once everything's lined up. And finally, we need to cut a notch out of the drawer backs for the runners to sit in. I've just marked this up by eye, and the cuts are easy to do at the bandsaw, though I've done plenty of these by hand over the years. Okay, so that's the notch cut out of the side. I'm getting close to actually getting ready to start to nail this together now. Those notches, obviously, 
go over the, allow the drawer to sit onto the runners and so the base goes right down flat. That's how the base gets its support. Um, but yeah, we've got the back with the notches cut and grooved and the loose tenons, dominoes in the side there. We've got both sides grooved, dominoed, and the peanut twos at the front for the face. We've got the draw base ready to go, a little bit of curve on the front edge, just to make sure that goes in nicely. We've got the fascias that we did way back. Uh, they've been grooved as well with the peanut two keyhole slots in there, so that should just go straight in. Don't think we need to dry fit it, but I'm going to give it a quick sand over before we start the glue up. Uh, and then once that's glued up and in clamps, we can start getting, that's the, the last of the woodwork really, then we can start getting the draw runners into the box. There's a couple of little holes to drill. We get the clips fitted and that, you know, that should be that, but get this sanded first and then we can get it glued up. The veneer on this plywood is very thin, so I'm using a P180 abrasive to very gently take off any burrs around the routing. Then I can get the boxes glued up, starting with the loose tenons to join the back with the sides. The most important thing here is to make sure that the groove for the base lines up, otherwise it'll be a fight later on. And I'm just using a scrap piece of 6mm plywood in each corner to make sure that that works. And then clamping everything up, adding a square into one corner just for good measure. The base slides into the groove and sits completely flush with the front edges. You'll remember we had the groove a little deeper in the back. This is so that the keyhole slot we routed into the fascia can fit over the peanut fixings, then slide down into position, tightening up as it goes due to some clever and patented engineering. And once in position, I can slide the draw base forwards, locating it into the slot in the draw front. To lock it down, I've added a couple of tiny slivers of plywood to the back of the base, just glued in on one side so they're easy to remove if you ever need to. While the glue dries, I can fit the runners to the carcass. According to the specs, these should be set back by the thickness of the draw fronts plus three millimeters. I'm making it a little deeper than that just to give myself a bit of wiggle room and I'm just fixing the runners in for now with a single screw just in case I need to tweak that later on. There are many, many screw holes to choose from if we need them. I said before that the draw box needs a couple of holes drilling into the back to locate on the little hooks on the runners. There are jigs that you can buy that help you find the perfect position for those but I'll be doing this one old school with a bit of tape over the back of the drawer and some pencil lead on the tips of the hooks. I've taped a couple of 5mm dominoes to the side of the carcass to help keep the drawer box roughly centred. Then I've pushed the drawer firmly against the hooks so that the pencil lead leaves a mark. That's where I need to drill out a 6mm hole, about 10mm deep. And again, I'm just doing this by feel. If you don't feel confident enough to do this, then by all means, please use a stop on the drill bit as you really don't want to go all the way through. And the final part is to add these locking clips to the underside of the drawer fronts. As I said before, these clips have a few millimetres of adjustment for in, out, up, down, and side to side movement. And I'm setting them slightly away from the inside edge of the drawer. Again, just fixing them down with one screw for now, just in case they need a tweak later on. The drawer simply slides on and you can hear the clips engage with the runners locking them into place. So that's uh, remarkably good, better than I was expecting to be honest for a first fit and perfectly acceptable to me. I need to lock the runners and clips down with another screw in each and get the second set of runners and the second drawer fitted in the other side, then I can get a coat of uh, Keith Brown's excellent oil wax finish onto the fascias, giving it a bit of time to soak in before buffing it up and getting all the other drawers fitted back into that cabinet. 
And that's the workshop draw cabinet pretty much complete using different techniques for the drawers and runners and each one with its own set of compromises, its own pros and cons. The simple box at the top makes the best use of the space and is the easiest to take out but without runners or slides you don't get any niceties like soft clothes. The middle drawers on the side mounted ball race runners are really easy to fit though you do lose a bit of space due to the thickness of the slide itself even with a rebate like I made and they are visible in use. The soft close action isn't the smoothest either, but these runners are great value and very well priced at around £10 a pair. And finally, we've got these undermount or concealed draw runners. They're virtually invisible in use and have the best soft close action by far. But they are a little bit more fiddly to fit and they do cost a little bit more too that these particular ones are great value at about £17 for a pair of the 500 millimeter runners that I used here you'd pay closer to 40 pounds for the equivalent from Bloom for example. Overall I'm very happy with how it's gone. I need to get the camera in place under the bench before deciding whether or not it needs any further adjustment but I'll call this one done for now. Thanks so much for taking a look. Uh, the next one up I'll be back to the basic builds I think with a super simple little project to practice your track source skills on but that's it for this one. Thanks again for taking a look and I'll see you very soon. Take care.